From the station that made country music famous, 650 AM WSM, this is a Coffee Country and Cody podcast. Hey, it's Charlie Madison, and in this episode, we take you back to February the 26th of 2020. What a fun morning it was in studio with Emmy Sunshine and her producer, the legendary Tony Brown. Family Wars is the new album they had just released. Enjoy our Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast with Emmy Sunshine and Tony Brown. Jonas Black is what you just heard. It's brand new from Emmy Sunshine and the Rain and Family Wars is the album produced by Tony Brown, who is in studio. And good morning, Emmy Sunshine. Good morning. How are you? I am well. For people watching on Circle Television all over the country this morning, did Tony Brown do your hair? No. (laughs) Um, Um. He didn't, but I'm sure he could. (laughs) I don't know. Maybe. Tony, if if you take a look at Emmy and go, you know, that would look good on me. Well, you know, that's funny you brought that up because when I I did Cindy Lauper's album three years ago, and she interviewed everybody in town, Paul Worley, uh, James Stroud, Byron Gallimore, and she picked me. And I said, why did you pick me? She said, it was your hair. <laughs> well, Perfect. Emmy, where did you meet Tony Brown? Where did he come well, into your life? it was on my birthday, actually. Uh, I think I just turned 14? 13. 13, I think. I, yeah, I just turned 13. And I walked into his house, and my manager, Steve, uh, he got me in touch with Tony. And um, I walked in, and I was like, hi, nice to meet you. We sat down, started talking about some artists that I love. And uh, then I sang him a murder ballad. And then after that, it's been history now, I guess. That's right. How long ago was that? Well, you know, it was a few years ago now. About two and a half years ago. Two and a half, two and a half yeah. yeah. So what were the artists? Who were the artists that well, you, you shared Well, I think I mentioned them? then, I think I mentioned the Dixie Chicks. And yeah, the like Dixie that. Chicks' first two albums yeah, are was... two of my favorites and two of her favorites. I said, I like you already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a lot of fun talking to each other, and, I, and we still do, so it's oh, yeah, really we cool. we sure do. Well, how were you, what was the occasion? Because I was there when you debuted at the Grand Ole Opry. How long ago has that been now? Um, how long ago? I think I was around nine years old when I did that. Yeah. Um, six about six years ago. Gosh. Um, but yeah, I I guess a video of me went, went viral around that time, and then we got invited on the Opry. So it was it was a really cool experience. Yeah, I remember people. They were back in the cage, which is where they rehearse before we go out and do the Opry show. It yeah, was, the last time it was nerve wracking. The last time I met someone who impressed me as quickly as Emmy did was when I met Lyle Lovett. Steve Earle, Nancy Griffith, and Patty Loveless. So I'm fi- I'm feeling like it's deja vu. I'm starting all over again. Well, Joe Smith was talking about your book, Elvis, Straight to Jesus, a little bit ago. And when you were in, when it first came out, and we right. were talking, and uh, you said that book got you up off the couch. That's right. And got you back to business. And you said, but I want to produce again, and I am. And I said, who are you working with? And I can still see the glow when you said, Emmy Sunshine. Because <laughs> you guys were in the middle of what turned out to be the project we're hearing this That's morning. That's right. Yeah, that was. No, actually, we started doing a one-off thing mm-hmm. and and pulled back and then I did her family album which to me was a the experience of learning what more about her music so it was a good experience to do the family album because I'm trying to do a one-off thing like Allison did when she did when you say nothing at all mm-hmm. and to keep her authenticity but do something that's her own and so I went and did the family album which ended up being a lesson in what she's really all about, and and I think it's a great album, actually. What does Tony Brown look for? You you the names you just mentioned. What do you look for in an artist just to the, work with? Uh, that Zach Brown song, "She's Got Whatever It Is," and it mm-hmm. blows me away. You just look for that whatever that it is, and it's something is in in not not a tangible thing that you just feel it in your gut that there's something special. You look for authenticity. And you look for something really good, you know, or actually really great. As David Foster said, good is the enemy of great. <laughs> uh, so you look for something great, and you just – it just hits your soul, and you you trust your gut. I mean, my gut has always seemed to to pay off, you know. When Vince was playing guitar with the Cherry Bombs, I convinced him to move to Nashville and become a country artist because when I met him, he was with Pure Prairie League. Yeah. And he came to Nashville, and he became a – 
a big star. So, and when I met Amy, I had that same feeling. It was really an epiphany for me, and it was a serendipity moment that I will never, ever question, and I'm happy it happened to me. Well, I hope Vince is listening as he does on his way to Nashville if he's in town this morning. <laughs> Tony Brown in studio with Emmy Sunshine. I'd love for you to play something live for us right now. Of course. I'm going to do a song called There's Got to Be More. Now I ain't no bird, but I can see that sky. Live performance of Emmy Sunshine and the new album Family Wars produced by Tony Brown, who is in studio with her this morning. Have you ever had a shy moment in your life? Um, well, when I first was on the Grand Ole Opry, yeah. I mean, I was, I was like... I don't remember it that way. You seem perfectly comfortable up there in front of all those well, people. Well, I, I was. I, I, you, you know, you gotta fake it till you make it sometimes. So I, mean, I was like, I was like, okay, I'm very nervous for this. I didn't, I didn't want to ruined this amazing moment for me and, and I wanted it to be great and uh, I went up there and I was I was actually very nervous and I don't usually get nervous because well I mean I've been doing this for a little while and I just don't I've never had that because I grew up in music and it's just been a normal thing for me I was going to ask you about that where did music come into your yeah, life yeah my great grandmother was a singer my grandmother my dad and uh, uncles and cousins and everybody in, in between so um, and my mom's a writer so it's just been kind of our thing as we go to the break what was the first live performance where you were in front of people that you did oh um probably at church i would have to say yeah. I, I, I would sing songs at church and but i just i can't remember the first time because you know i've just been doing it for so long that i can't remember when <laughs> it was like when i just actually just started singing out of the blue that's emmy sunshine madisonville tennessee i believe hometown yes, yeah hometown. we'll be back tony brown's in studio brand new album family wars wherever you buy or download music Coffee, Country, and Cody. And a little sunshine on a gray old Nashville day. Just perfect, it seemed to me. Emmy Sunshine in studio with her producer, Tony Brown, in a brand new album, Family Wars. It's available wherever you buy or download music. And you, young lady, are a co-producer with one of the greats in the history of the universe sitting over here. I guess so, yeah. I mean, yeah, definitely. But I mean, like... <laughs> It was really fun to work with him on this and such an honor as well. So thank you, Tony. Back to you. So uh, for people who hear that word, you know, you hear singer, songwriter, performer, producer, as often as any other descriptions of jobs in this business, Tony. What does a producer do for those who really don't understand? They know the word, but they, they know you're involved in the record somehow. Well, you know, in, in film, producers are the one that raise the money for the film, and the director makes the film. In music... The, the record company has the money, and the producer makes the record. So the producer casts the songs for the album, uh, the studio, the engineer, and puts together the music, you know, makes the music. Uh huh. And when you co-produce with somebody, what is Emmy's role with you sitting there well, with your Well, you know, uh, Jimmy Bowen always said, just remember, it's the artist's record. It's not your record. And so... Mm. Uh, with the with the family here, as I was doing the record, uh, I realized I really had to rely on her opinion about certain things. So I would keep going to her, and I was going, you know, she's co-producing this record. So I'm, I made her take co-producer credit. She sort of fought it, and then she thought, well, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> so a co-producer just, you know, basically you contribute uh, making the record. You make it happen. Who's f uh, first person you made a record on as a producer? S Steve Warner with Nora Wilson on RCA. And uh, we had a number one record with Midnight Fire. And then uh, Jimmy Bowen stole me away for MCA. And then I cut Jimmy Buffett with him and Steve Warner. And then he let me sign some my own kind of acts like Nancy Griffith and Steve Earle and Lyle Lovett and Kelly Willis and the Mavericks. And all of a sudden I became like... Everybody thought I was a Merrick. <laughs> but, you know, I, I thought Steve Earle was the next Whalen, and the press said he was the next Mellencamp or Springsteen. I was just following my, my, my gut, you know. And the same with Emmy. People say, what is she like? Her voice reminds me of Natalie Maines with the Dixie Chicks. It has that same timbre. But she's a songwriter 
she's as good of a songwriter as she is a singer. And so she's got the whole package. And it's second nature for her to sing. I mean, you just saw it happen in Absolutely, here. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, this has got to be the worst gig she'll ever do, sitting at a chair in a radio station. <laughs> <laughs> well, Charlie went back and did the research. It was August 5th. 2014 that you made your Opry debut. Yeah. And I remember earlier we were talking about it, is the band and everybody involved in the Opry on a show night was back in rehearsal, and they were coming out into the Opry house on stage, and they go, man, before the curtain comes back, you got to come back here and see this. you got to hear this. You're not going to believe it. And Aww. it was Emmy Sunshine. And that's the kind of impact she had even when you were that young. Introduce the guys that are playing with you this morning before you Absolutely. play again. Absolutely. This is my brother John over here on mandolin, and my dad over here, Randall, who plays bass for me and my uncle bobby who plays drums so yeah family band family yes. hence family wars well <laughs> it is, yeah, that, that's up for debate um, <laughs> well i mean i i wrote that song pretty much that song about like i tend to like eavesdrop on people every now and then mm -hmm. and that's sort of where i find some of my ideas for songs so it's not about us no, it's about other people. So, yeah. so not about it, but it could be. What? <laughs> <laughs> that depends. <laughs> right. Well, I'd love for you to play and sing some more for us Thank this morning. You. <laughs> yeah, I got a song off this new album that's called uh, Meanwhile in America that I wrote with Kyle Jacobs and Vicki McGee. So, and my mother, of course. But yeah, here it is. I wake up, I wake up, wrapped in red, white, and blue. I was born with the freedom to... Emmy Sunshine live in front of her producer. That's Tony Brown sitting over there. You uh, were looking on with such admiration oh, and pride as you were watching her do that. Absolutely. That's, that's just a prolific song from a 15-year-old and her mom and Kyle Jacobs. But it's just, and her performance of it is, I'm sorry, I, I just love perfection, and that's what she is. <laughs> oh, gosh, thank you. Oh, no. Thank hey, you. plug your, uh, you're playing a ukulele, and you say you have I a am. ukulele endorsement. I do. Uh, Kala ukuleles, um, they are amazing. We love them so much. Um, but there's this lady at Kala, her name is Olivia, and she made this ukulele for me. It's my Kala ukulele, and it's and it's a custom one. It's a tenor ukulele that has my name and laid and everything, and it's very fabulous. But, um... I guess it was one of her first projects and everything, so she really got to be creative on this, and I, I just wanted her to make whatever she really just saw fit for me, and she did a great job. I mean, there's like a little blackbird um, on the top <laughs> of this, too, and I, I, I just love it so much. Thank you for coming to see us and getting up early and playing live for people all over the world this oh, morning. Oh, well, thank you for having me. And Tony, always great to see you. Don't see enough of you, buddy. Good to see you, too. Come back, hang anytime. Elvis Straight to Jesus is Tony's book you need to know about when you go to the web and you're looking for music from Emmy Family Wars, Emmy Sunshine and the Rain. Uh, Third and Lindsley, that is uh, Friday of this week. Got a couple of shows in Huntsville, Alabama. That'll be on uh, the, that's coming on the weekend ahead on February the 29th. And then she's off to uh, Finley, Ohio, playing in Illinois, Iowa, North Carolina. It's all at emmysunshine.com. Thanks for listening to our Coffee Country and Cody podcast. Our program director at WSM Radio is J. Patrick Tittle. Our digital producer is Haley Hall. Marketing and promotions director is Amanda Cannon. And I'm Charlie Matos. If you like what you've heard, make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. And leave us a review on iTunes. It really does help new people find the show.